be a good starting place for this. He's going to create movement. Uh, don't go too fast. Slow it down. Make every movement intentional. My job as top person is to practice and form my connections to Nathan as he moves around. So starts turtle. My first connection is chest down and then knees up so that not only do I have connection, but I also have some pressure as well. And now Nathan starts the moving process. Doesn't have to be crazy. After about a minute, I'll switch you, and then the other person can go bottom. Bottom person becomes top. On three with the clap. One, two, three. There's attachment, but is there a connection? No, because I, I can't predict where he's going to go. I can't stop his movement. There's slack in the system here. So there is attachment, but there's no connection. Now if we create tension here, now I have a connection that I can anticipate movements on. So even if I close my eyes, Nathan's going to uh, try to slap me in the head with that hand. Okay, and I'm hopefully going to predict when that's going to happen. So eyes are closed. Eyes are closed because of the, the tension in the connection. Last night in uh, no gi class, uh, we had the bad guy coming in, getting up in our, up in our grill, and uh, I'm not sure what's happening here, so as he comes in in, a, uh, in an aggressive manner, I form a connection on the arms. Whoa there, buddy. And uh, now in order for him to make a move on me, he has to draw back and punch. Without a connection there, he has room to operate. With a tight connection here, as he draws back, I can read that movement and then um, adapt accordingly. Uh, let's all practice a, uh, a connection drill. Put your hand out. One of you takes the fist, the other one palm. Okay. If you're in Nathan's position, your job is to not let my hand touch your chest. Close your eyes. You can still do it, eyes closed. Easy peasy. Okay? Close your eyes, put your hand out. Don't let my hand touch your chest. <laughs> it's, it's impossible, even with his eyes open. Okay, don't let my hand touch your chest. Yeah, but with the connection, okay, even eyes closed, he can track and follow with wherever I go. So um, let's uh, let's practice that real quick and then we'll go back to that first drill that we did. And uh, my, my goal is, my hope is that um, things will uh, connect a little bit better in that drill. On three, one, two, three. Turtle position is a great place to start on this one. But now that we have an understanding of um, attachment versus connection, as we go through this, as Nathan moves, my job or my goal, my mission is to try to anticipate where he's going and, uh, and try to beat him there. So I start here and I'm using my, in this case, my attachment or my uh, connection with my chest to his back to read his next movement. My connection just shifted to my lower body there. Keep going. Oh. 
Give it a try. One, two, three. Okay. Nathan is going to share the, the next drill, the next connection drill that we're going to go through. So uh, take it away, Nathan. Okay, so we're kind of going from just attaching to someone to actually connecting to someone using some tightness or some weight. So now we're going to do that with the underhook here. So if I just grab Byron here, I'm attached to him, but if he starts moving around, he's kind of, he's pulling me around. Right? I don't have control of him yet. And that's because I haven't connected my shoulder, right? If I'm just touching him with my shoulder, it's still the same thing's gonna happen. So what I need is I need to connect my shoulder, right? I'm adding some weight to it, some pressure to it. So now wherever he goes, I can follow and adjust. If he wants to push into me, I can push and be ready. If he wants to pull away, I can sink my hips back and keep him from pulling me back with him. So just that shoulder connection, right in, into his armpit and then pulling a little bit with my hand on the back just creates more connection than just grabbing here where he's still controlling me huge difference between the two so let's do this let's uh, um feel what they both are like so uh, nathan it's his turn he, he gets the underhook he's gonna not have a connection he has attachment but no connection just so he can feel the difference uh in the two and so now attachment no connection i'm gonna kind of move around and I'm able to kind of manipulate him. And then he'll gain his connection. He'll put that connection on. And already I feel that my movement ability has drastically gone down. So now I'm going to try to move and manipulate him. Very unsuccessful. Okay. Give it a try. Uh, back and forth with your partners. On three. One, two, three. We're now on the ground, and again, I'm just trying to try to present you with ideas in how how the connections work from a variety of situations. We'll get into some more specific drills uh, a little bit later in class, but another connection example that I want you guys to practice. This is going to be um, a connection to his neck where I'm choking him. And, and you can do this in a, in a couple different ways. I'll demonstrate uh, a couple versions of the choke. First one is I'm gonna go fingers in, fingers in like this, and I'm wrapping the lapel over this carotid, and then I'm pulling the other one here. If I just have attachment but no connection, I have to put a lot of juice into the, into the choke. So I have attachment right now, I don't have good connection. I'm attached to him. It's not a good connection. So I connect. Attachment, but no connection. Attachment with connection. Subtle differences like that that make it or break it in your in your live goes. Uh, palm up, palm up. I, maybe some of you guys have been here where you're feeding in, pulling them up, shoving that hand in, coming across, open them up, punching this hand in. There's attachment, and then you're here and you're squeezing and you're squeezing and you're squeezing and nothing happens and maybe you get open over. But if we just become mindful of the attachment or the connection it doesn't have to be aggressive. Just put the hand in here. But I have a connection to his neck via the back of my hand there. There's still slack in the system here. I don't have to go here. Oh, connected. And I come under, get it, connect. Here, 
Maybe it's palm up, but not here where there's no connection. There, don't even need to make a grip. And this can be accentuated then when you start using pressure and gravity um, in the process as well. Here, coming across, using gravity to amplify everything. So let's practice this, whether you wanna do this version or this version or this version, whatever you want, just feel those connections on your partner's neck and then go back and forth. One, two, three. We're in the mount um, a minute ago with uh, the choking connections. Let's do a little mount stabilization via via the connection. Okay, I'm attached to him. My uh, uh, my hips or my rear end is connected to his hips, but there's no there's not a good connection here. And remember, connections go both ways. Um, He's also connected to me, and in this case, he has a better connection towards me. So if he lifts his hips and bumps me, it's very difficult for me to not go forward. And if he chooses an angle, if he goes at an angle, goes that way, it's very difficult for me to not go that way. But if I gain a better connection than him through, in this case, my knees and my feet. Okay, so now I'm connected here, and I'm connected here to my knees. Now he goes to bump. much more difficult and more taxing on him. And if I want to employ more pressure via gravity, then I can drop my hips and my feet go down behind him. So here's this connection as he's bumping. I use this connection and then as I want to add pressure, hips go down, feet come out. Now if he goes this way, drop my hip. As I feel him go the other way, dropping the hip. And I can stay ahead of him because of that connection. I, I feel where his energy is wanting to go and I can compensate before he's able to move that way. So the drill that I want you to do is practice this, staying on via that connection and then drop him down. And then he's gonna move side to side. You sh should be able to do this even no hands. There. And then let him have a turn. So Nathan, come on up. Again, with attachment, but no connection by Nathan, I should be able to bump and he'll fall forward. But now he gets that connection and already I feel uh, much, much more connection, much harder ability to take him where I want him to go. He drops his hips, puts that pressure on as I try to go this way. And even before I have the opportunity to move that way, He's already feeling it happen. Give it a try. One, two, three. I want to go into a, a more live drill. And I think I mentioned on Tuesday that in our classes, from kind of henceforth, we're going to be, eh, the drilling's just going to be different. It's not going to be technique driven, where, you know, we come up with scenarios where if he does this, I do this. Or in this, you know, scenario, I would do this. It's going to be more research driven, where you're going to discover connection options in this case and uh, practice them. So let's do some research right now. And this goes both ways. This is a two-way street for us. Nathan and I are gonna research different connections. Uh, before this class started, Nathan and I were, were training and we found some really cool connections. And when you find those connections, stay there. Play with them a little bit and uh, try, to, try to put some time in there. So one connection that we got into 
would be side control. Yeah. So what, what was going on there, Nathan? So I was trying to solidify my side control. I want to be in here like this or like this, right? And so Byron, he had a good frame on my hip, right? With his hand up here, his elbow down here. And so a lot of the times, lower belts or newer people, they will stiff arm this hip with their hand maybe or their elbow. And so do, do that. Yeah, like that. And so this is a, a connection, right? But it's, it's not as good as it could be. Right? Connections we adjust as the other person adjusts. So if he just does this, I can just pick up his elbow and slide in. And so what Byron was doing really good is his, as I drive this top hip, he pushes with his hand. And then as I try and drive my bottom hip, he switched to his elbow, right? So no matter which way I went, he's always adjusting, see that? And so I can never gain forward progress, right? And so that's just a little battle that's a really good example of connection, having it in the right spot at the right time, going back and forth. So we were just, we were just kind of rolling and we ended up staying in this position for probably two or three minutes, mm -hmm. just both playing with, with this connection. And then, and then we moved on and found something else. And that's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to research these different connections. And when you find a connection like this, uh, stay there a little bit, talk to each other and um, uh, try to log in as much data as you can on this, on how to make it more effective, you know, and one thing that I was thinking of in this scenario is, okay, well, this is fine. I'm, I'm stalling you out here. You're not able to make forward progress, but then ultimately, how do I, how do I get out from here? And then I think we moved on before I had a good chance to, uh, uh, to really research that. But just off the top of my head, let's play this a little bit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm operating between the stiff arm and then as, as you try to pull up, I drop that elbow here. One thing I was thinking of is this hand needs a job. It needs a connection. I'm connected here with my feet. Okay, I'm going to come up here like this and then move my hips out. But I need to do it at the right time. If if he has this forward pressure going into me, that's not the right time. But when he tries to make that elbow lift, that would be the right time. So it's situations and scenarios like that during these research sessions that you guys need to uh, play with and um, uh, discover for yourselves. Okay? Uh, so this is kind of a two-way street here. Uh, you're both actively working with But again, using the, the concept or the principle of connection. So we're in side control. Okay, he's doing a good job. He has his arms tight together. He's got frames here like this. And one of the things that Nathan will probably attempt to do in this situation is start creating some space here like that. Okay, if I stay on my knees, he creates that space with his frames. He starts getting his lower body in. So part of, part of connection is being able to ditch certain connections when they're no longer viable and then switch those out with something else. So here, as I feel him start to do this push, I, I go with it and I change the connection from my chest. I, I'm not knees. Yeah, I want most of my weight on him. So as he pushes, I switch the connection to my hip and I take my hand high five him, but it's not, it's not this, it's here. Turning my chest back in here. Don't elbow your partner in the face, but drop that elbow down. This hand comes in. Sometimes you might punch it in this way. Sometimes you can find that you can carve it right underneath. And then I make the connection to my wrist. Americanas are Hard to get with poor connections. From right here, straighten your arm. Okay, good. Gonna hold on as tight as I can. Straighten your arm. Now there are things that I could do as he straightens his arm. We can come out, move to an arm crush, but he can still turn it the other way. We could come back, maybe hunt for a Kimura. But let's, why not just finish with what you have? So the connection is the elbow to the neck. 
If I focus the connection here, my elbow to his neck, straighten your arm, and it costs me very little energy. No connection, straighten your arm, straighten your arm, straighten your arm. With connection. So the drill here, side control. Okay, look at this, look at this. I have a connection here. I'm up on my toes. I have a connection with my quad here. Forming as many connections as I can. He has these frames. He starts to push. He starts to push. Connect. Because otherwise you get pushed off. So he pushes. Connect. Turn. High five. Come back. Drop that elbow to his neck. Form the connection. The connection is the ground and the elbow. And now to finish it, that's it. Doesn't have to be this huge movement there. It's just that. Last time, here, having those connections, 